Oh, the truck just pulled up, does it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Nine eleven for you. Oh, customer rejection. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, hope you're doing well. Uh, those of you who follow the channel closely will know that I've not had the greatest start to 2024. It's been a bit of a, a rough ride, what with our MO2 centre falling through, what with just non-stop warranty claims. Uh, yeah, it's just all been a bit of a nightmare really. So I thought I'd treat myself to a nice Porsche. Just kidding, it's one I've had to take back uh, because the finance company are rejecting it on behalf of the customer. You may remember this car, it was my car. I loved it, I drove it all the way to Paris. If you haven't seen that video, Toby will put it up here. It's a great car, I absolutely love it. So in one sense, I'm not too unhappy to see it back, but we have got it back. And mm, there's a few things we need to talk about with what's happened here. So I'll take you back to the beginning and we'll talk about how this has all come about. So this is my, my the customers, the whatever, the Porsche 911. It's a 911 Carrera 2S, so it's a two-wheel drive. It's a 3.8 flat six. Got to really be careful not to say straight six as I occasionally get my words mixed up and people will slaughter me to death in the comments. It's a flat six boxer engine, awesome car. It's a Tiptronic. Um, this one's got heated leather. It's got the sports chrono pack. Um, I've put an Alcantara leather steering wheel on it and put Tiptronic buttons on it, which was like an updated one from a 997.1, I think. This is the 997. It's like one of the very early ones. It's a 54 plate. Uh, it is a 2004. So this is like the crossover year because you still get the kind of fried egg ones. What are they? The 996. But they've got the weird headlights. But this is the much prettier one. Anyway, I had this car. I drove it for quite a while for myself. It was my own car. I had my own private plate on it. And then decided that I didn't really use it enough. Didn't warrant it. And I would sell it. So we sold it to a chap who uh, loved it. Was keen to have it wanted to take it straight away, you know, no MOT wanted done, he just wanted to be able to take it as soon as possible and took it on finance. And um, yeah, all well and good. I think uh, we did whatever we needed to do in order to get it out to him and off he went. After making an admission, one thing we forgot to do was to put some new rear tyres on this car. We did say that we would put a new set on, um, but we were sorting out a couple other things. I'll tell you what it was, the power steering pump was faulty or something to do with it. So we were putting a new one of those on because it was leaking power steering fluid. And I think with all the kind of trying to get the right part, getting it all sorted, we just forgot about the tyres because they've still actually got, when they went through the PDI, they've got loads of tread, but there's just a bit of damage on some of them. Um, so we forgot to do that. And the guy sort of said, uh, oh, you haven't done the tyres. And I was like, oh, really sorry. Go and get some tyres done. I'll pay for them. And he said, well, actually, I want the aftermarket seats that you had. And again, that will have been in the previous video. I fitted some Braum racing seats in these. So I just thought they'd look cool. They did look cool, but they were hideously uncomfortable. And they weren't very generous for a man of my size. And our customer was an even larger chap. So I didn't think they were going to pan out for him. But he wanted them regardless. And he said, look, knock some money off the seats because I had them up for sale. And um, I'll get my own tyres. So that was that. He sent someone down to come and get these seats. And um, I knocked some money off for the sake of the tyres. And off he went. He sent us some emails, pictures where they're fitting the seats. Looks like they made a real pig's ear of trying to fit them in. And then they had an airbag warning light come on. And God knows what they did with it. We had to give them some guidance on how to do it. He had these mechanics who work for him, look like they're in a cow shed and, you know, we're in Wellington boots or whatever. But anyway, they uh, fitted those seats and that was that. Didn't hear anything else until he went for his MOT because remember, we didn't do a new MOT for him. So he went off and got his MOT done and it failed on emissions because there was a couple of leaks on the exhaust. I think he had a go at doing it himself, but he also said, oh, well, while we were doing that, we know it's had a bit of a coolant leak. So, you know, can we bring it back and you do it? He's, he, by this point, He'd only driven it maybe 800 miles and decided he didn't really want the car anymore. He's like, can I bring it back and, you know, you can fix them and whatever. And I was like, yeah, okay, well, so if it's something we'll, we'll do that, that's fine. We'll have a look for you. Um, and he's like, will you sell it for me on my behalf? Because I, I, I've decided I don't want it. I don't use it. And um, I can't get as much money for it as you could. And I said, well, let's get it back and I'll have a look at it. We'll get these things sorted for your MOT. Not really technically our problem by this point because it was five months down the line. But... We'll, uh, we'll have a look at those for you. So in the end, we looked at it and it had been like siliconed up across the exhaust. It was like a pathetic attempt at just bodging on some um, exhaust paste. So we sorted that out. We got it through the MOT. There's the car back. I don't want to sell it because you've done damage to it. And for me to sell this again, it's a 20, what is it? A 20 year old Porsche 911. And 
I need to have like a pretty decent margin in it because otherwise you get warranty claims like this come back and I, I can't deal with it, you know, on 500 quid. And he wasn't very happy. He was more upset that I wouldn't sell it for him and getting the most of his money back than he was about anything else, basically. So in the end, he, I was like, well, sorry, but I don't want to sell it. It's your car. It's fixed. We fixed more than we had to. So you'll have to come pick it up. So he did send someone to pick it up on a trailer, one of his farm boys, and took it away. And he's like, oh, yeah, no, I've got instant problems with the Tiptronic gearbox, which is something I've never had a problem with. Um, took it, like I say, took it all the way to Disneyland Paris, 800 miles, no problems whatsoever. Um, and of course, the other thing I didn't mention is when it did come back to us, it's absolutely filthy. It's got stone chips all over it. It's got the wrong number plate on the rear. Then it, it's got a barometer's number plate on the front and on the back, it's got auto care somewhere, which always raises suspicions. And I think they might have damaged some trims when they're in there mucking around with the seats and still got the old tires on. They haven't been changed. So just think this guy hasn't cared for this car whatsoever. He's just trying to wriggle out of it because he wants as much money back as possible. He's changed his mind. He's got buyer's remorse. He's bought a 20 year old Porsche. He thought it was going to be brand new. Um, and it isn't obviously. So I kind of tried to contest this, but the finance company who we use in order to sell the car, um, who have now very well gone off of basically just sided with him. They said they'd had an independent report. They said, oh, these faults would have been present at the time of purchase, which was seven months before at this point. And the customer said this has happened. The customer said that happened. And they just sent me an email saying we've sided with them. I didn't even know this was happening. So they should have come to me. And I said, well, you, I don't know how you can come to a, a fair conclusion because you've only got one side of the story and you haven't heard from me that he's modified things and mucked around with it. And he just basically hasn't maintained it. He hasn't even spent the money on the tires that he should have done. But they've decided because he's only done 800 miles and X, Y, and Z, the fact with the Tiptronic thing, the battery kept going flat, so it probably needs a new battery. So try a new battery and you know see how it goes with that after seven months. These Porsches are notorious for draining batteries because the alarm system does that, apparently. Um, you can get trickle charge. That's what most people do. If you've got one of these and you leave it in the garage, leave it trickling away so you don't drain your battery. I imagine that's what most of the mechanical problems are. But the long and short of it is the finance company side with them. I can't really argue with them. The other option they gave me was if I didn't agree to this, they would send it to auction and they would just bill me for the difference. And I knew that this is a good car. And if I sent it to auction, I would get absolutely crucified on the price. So I said, make sure I get it back. I was just looking at them. I thought I saw a massive crack, but I think it's the heater element or something. It's going to be interesting to see what we find with this. Let's have a look inside and see how this car was returned to us. Bear in mind the chap's only done 800 miles, in which time we've had it back and I think we cleaned it for him. From a start, you can see it's just not clean. The guy lives on a farm and it shows. But absolutely filthy inside. We've actually got like mold and stuff here where it's just been parked up and left. Got all our paperwork and random washers and screws. God knows what that's come from. There's even like, oh my God, look at the headlining. So this is a Alcantara headlining and it's moldy. Great. And this is a car that he bought for about £22,000 all in, which is money I'm going to have to give back. The finance company very graciously have said, oh, we'll allow you to um, pay us back in full, minus one month's payments from the chat, which probably were 400 quid or something. And then I need to find out what the faults are and I can deduct that from the guy's deposit. I think what we need to do is get the lads to clean it and uh, I'll drive it for a day or two. We'll see what comes up, if anything and uh, we'll have to try and sell it again. Just another fun little thing we've got to deal with. Um, be interesting to hear your thoughts, whether you think that's fair or not, that I should just be told that I have to buy this back pretty much at full price after eight months. He's only done 800 miles, but that's his choice. He could have done more. He hasn't done the tires, which he's had money for. Um, clearly hasn't looked after the car and it's just like, you have it back because you've sold it at some point. You fixed all the problems that he'd raised that after five months weren't my fault. Um, but just because they were MOT failures, there was a leak on the exhaust somewhere. And what was the other thing? There was a coolant leak. We changed an oil cooler for the engine. So we changed that, no problem. It was like a 30 quid part. Um, but 
buyer's remorse. I think it's just buyer's remorse and trying to find any reason to hand it back to me and make out like somehow it's my fault. But you know, some people aren't cut out to own a 20 year old Porsche. So the dodgy dealer gets stuck with dealing with it again. So I'm gonna let the guys clean it. Let's at least feel good about it, that it's clean. Hey ho, at least I got a Porsche 911 back in my life and you never know, I might keep it because I do love this car. So let's let uh, Jordan and Mark give it a clean, get it inside, clean the mold out of it, and then I'll take it home and we can see where we go from there. Okay, just a quick break. And if you want to protect yourself from financial losses, like you'll make if you sell a Porsche and have to have it rejected after a year, then let me talk to you about Aura. They are the AI powered online safety device for your phone. You get an app, you get a website. It protects you from identity theft. It protects your online data, as well as a host of other things. It's got up to a million dollar insurance. Should you suffer from identity theft, you can have all of your things set up on your app. You can have a credit score. You will get notifications if anyone tries to open a new credit card or borrow money in your name. It can remove spam calls and spam emails as well. It's an all-in-one system that covers an absolute multitude of things for a very small price. And it's something that's well worth having because you know that you're at a one in four chance of falling victim to online crime. So it pays to have someone like Aura on your side. The list of what Aura does is pretty much endless. If you look through their website, there's things from like checking the dark web for your data. They will check to see whether your email address has been used and other things, your address, whether another name's been added to your mortgage, things that you'd wanna know about if they're happening, you can get real time near enough updates on your phone. You get a VPN for up to 10 devices on the individual package, which is gonna keep your data safe, especially if you're using public Wi-Fi. If it sounds like something you need, then check out the link in the description. You can get a 14 day free trial, money back, you can cancel at any time, and you can get up to 63% off as well. Right then, so it's the next day. I took the 911 home yesterday. Uh, all seemed to drive pretty damn good to be honest there was one thing when I once it was warmed up and came to sort of back to idle at a roundabout um, the engine management light came on and it went into like a, a misfire very minor and when you like accelerated again it went away so I think probably a coil pack is degenerating but again it's, it's actually 11 and a half months since the guy bought this car and we've now got it back so 11 and a half months later the finance company is making us take it back under rejection, which seems ridiculous. But there we are. We've got to make deductions for a few things that are wrong with it. I'll kind of go around to tell you what they are, tell you what's, you know, what's damaged on it, what's missing, all that sort of stuff. It's obviously peeing it down. So let's go around the outside first, and I'll try and point out some of the things that I've said, you know, we're not happy with. So on this door here, you can see these scratches, hopefully, where it's clearly been hit up against something as the door opens or something's been lent up against it. So that would need repainting to get it back to how it was. The edge of this door as well has been really bashed into stuff. So there's a few marks there. I mean, these are all minor things, but if I'm having to have this car back a year later, then uh, obviously we're gonna highlight these things. There's a scratch across this arch here, which probably doesn't look very obvious in the wet. But there is a scratch through there. I mean, it probably will polish out, to be fair. And probably the worst of the paintwork damage. Something weird has happened on top of this wing here. Try and get it dry while it's raining. Hopefully you can see there's something weird going on there. There is a, like a full walk around video of this car before it went out, um, which kind of shows all this stuff. I'll link that in the description so you can see for yourself the condition this car was in before it went out. Uh, as I pointed out before, it's got a different number plate on the back for some strange reason. There are lots of other scratches and whatever around it. In fact, now it's been cleaned, it looks absolutely awesome. It's a gorgeous car, but it's not quite as gorgeous as when it first went out. Um, the reason I got it running right now, as you can see, it's all steamed up inside. So where it hasn't really been used, it's been getting damp. That's why it had kind of mold on the headlining and things like that so let's hop inside and we'll, we'll talk about it more right so there i think there was some kind of weird little indent in the rear seat before but there's even more now so something's been kind of wedged in the back the rear seat looks a bit damaged but i'm sure we can solve that we're not making a big fuss about that this is the uh, kind of engine management thing that we've got currently 
I'm going to try and plug in my Carly, see if we can't get it cleared with that. Um, it's going to need a coil pack or something, you know. That's fine. I mean, it's a year down the line. It's not the end of the world. We'll do that. I think if it had been driven, it probably would have been okay, but it hasn't really been driven. So um, can't really complain about that too much. You'll see that obviously we've got our Pioneer head unit in here, so you can do Apple Play and all that sort of stuff, which I put in there. What we also did when we sold this car, we said, look, there's the Pioneer unit, but I have got the original Porsche PCM head unit, which had sat nav and all that sort of stuff in there, um, which comes with this car. Obviously, you want to keep that. We'll keep it with the car. It's all part of the car. So that went in the front. That's not there. That's not come back to us. So to buy one of those secondhand on eBay is about 300 quid. The other thing that's not come back to us is any of the service history, other than a couple of sheets, like, for example, things that we put in the sales folder when we sold it to him, which was our last service. Uh, I think there was something from where it had a steering rack. But other than that, the actual service book, which is missing all of the previous service history, including things from this company, PAR, who are a specialist Porsche um, dealership and service center, was all in there. So there's no service history with this car. It's now gone from being a full service history Porsche 911 to zero service history. So we haven't had that back. The next thing that's a bit weird is the rear view mirror. It's got an auto dimming rear view mirror, but it's got this weird thing that's happened. It's got like a, whatever it is, the chemical that's in there, this is gonna be really hard to show you. Hopefully you can see, I can't see through my screen, but there's this weird thing here where I think someone's probably put their finger on it and kind of pressed it and messed up the mercury, whatever it is that's in there, I don't know. But it's now got this weird hologram. It's, it's very obvious in person. In fact, if you look at it from back here, you can probably see it better. I can see it through the screen now. So there's that and it's, it's just, well, that section there and that. So if you want a new one of those, that's 605 pounds basically from Porsche. It had a full set of genuine Porsche mats in here as well. Well, half of those are missing. They haven't come back. There's quite a few bits missing out of here that should be here that were part of what he paid the £22,950 for originally that we just haven't had back, so we need to be able to deduct for those. There was 947 miles that he's done, so we're gonna make a deduction for that. And there might be a few other bits and pieces, but I can't remember. What we'll do at the end of this video, we'll sit down in the office and I will go through everything that I'm putting in my email to the finance company saying, these are all the things that aren't right, that should be right. Um, so this is what we want to take from the deposit that we're meant to be giving back. But before we do that, let's head out on the road, see how it drives, because the main reason he's now rejected this and the finance company have accepted that without having spoken to me is because supposedly it's got gearbox faults and the gearbox is making a horrible whining noise. So let's head out on the road and see if that's the case. Right, so I was gonna plug in my Carly and try and clear the codes, but actually having driven this last night, I know that it's gonna drive okay anyway. So let's just see what happens. I think there's going to be a lot of you in the comments that are saying, oh, well, obviously it has got faults, etc., etc." Well, if you take a 20-year-old Porsche and you don't drive it practically at all for 11 months, the battery goes flat. A few things are probably going to pop up. You know, this isn't a brand new car. And it's not a Nissan Micra. So, first of all, we're just nice and steady. Gearbox is changing gears. I can't hear any gearbox whine. This doesn't have a sports mode it's just got drive and then you can go into manual mode and as I said before I fitted this PDK steering wheel so that you can use the paddles basically it's not really got paddles it's got buttons but they're quite nice ones um, so pull towards you to go down a gear which hopefully you can hear and then push forward to go up a gear I forgot how much I loved this car. So planted, sounds so good. And it's so easy to drive as well. Woo! What a car! <laughs> and it's quick as well for a car that's... It's only got 350 brake horsepower. But my God! Does it deliver it well? 
So we're back into normal mode here. And one of the complaints he had was that it was uh, jumping between gears. So check, we've got no one behind us. It always sets off in second anyway. So his complaint was it would jump between first and second. Well, look, if you've got it in just normal drive mode, it sets off in second anyway. Into third there, driving perfectly normally. We don't know how hard he was driving this car, of course. So let's just try back down to second. Okay, so maybe what he's thinking there of it jumping is the fact that it sets off in second and if you put your foot down hard, it drops to, oh, there's a new camera, that's interesting. It drops to first to make sure your low revs to make the most of your power and then hops you back up. Is that what he's been worrying about, thinking that the gearbox is damaged? I mean, the gearbox isn't damaged. I don't even know why I'm questioning it and trying to justify or validate what the guy's saying. Clearly, he just decided he didn't want the car anymore. He couldn't afford the 400 quid a month or whatever it was and was going to just make it my problem, which, which it has become. But I'm certainly not going to make it an easy get out for him. CFR sports suspension. Oh, we do have a sport mode. I forgot. That's how long it's been since I've driven this car. We have got a sport mode. So I guess that kind of sharpens up. Oh my God. It is crazy how well the hydromagnetic or whatever it is, suspension on this thing works because it goes from being a really comfortable, easy to drive car that's like smooth and handles the bumps and the roads well to this. Now, hopefully you can see by the way I'm bouncing around. That is crazy. I'm gonna turn that off. Let's leave it in sport mode with the suspension off. Don't think you'd ever want to use that unless you're on the track, really. So essentially what we've got here is a 20-year-old Porsche. It's on 100,000 miles. It's actually in good condition, other than the fact that it hasn't been looked after for the last 11 months. It's got one minor issue at the moment that I can see, which is that at idle, after once the car's warmed up and you get to idle, it misfires a little bit. But the only reason for it to misfire only at certain temperatures or whatever would probably be that a coil pack is malfunctioning a little bit at temperature. In fact, I haven't even noticed it on this drive. I did notice it last night. You might find that now if this gets used, that the coil pack will perhaps dry out a bit of moisture and it'll be fine. I don't know. We're gonna have to get this in the workshop, obviously, and check it all over. And the other thing as well we've got is that it's not reading a coolant temperature at the moment. Now, it definitely was when it left because we did that oil cooler and we topped everything up, checked everything that was leveling out and whatever, but currently it's not reading a coolant temperature. So again, it wants a sensor, unsurprising 20 year old electronics. You're probably gonna want a sensor every once in a while. So, so far, the reason that we can see this guy's rejected this car after nearly a year is an occasional slight misfire. We're gonna come to traffic lights in a second. So we'll see if it starts kind of like juddering then. And, a coolant temperature sensor and that's it and that's why I've got to have it back at the full value. Does that seem fair to you? Do you know what I can't even be that mad because I know he's in the wrong and I know this isn't a fair situation but <laughs> I love this car I really do love this car I think it's awesome. Let's just put it into neutral oh, no, that's not we're moving off. What I love about this car the most is it looks awesome, it drives awesome, sounds amazing, having the engine behind you, you really feel like you're driving something special. But it's just easy to drive, even for a bigger guy like me. I'm, I'm sat across the front of the seats a little bit, but it's still comfortable. In fact, I can put my heated seat on. It doesn't feel like it wants to kill you, but it's still fun. It still feels actually really modern for a 20 year old car, I think. Have I driven a modern 911? No, but I would like to. Tell you what, I wish I had left these seats in for my trip to uh, Paris. It would have been a lot more comfortable than those Braum aftermarket seats, I can tell you. Why is there so much traffic today? Anyway, you get the idea. I certainly haven't heard any gearbox whining noises of you. In fact, let me put my microphone down here by the gearbox. I mean, the gearbox will be in the middle here somewhere probably, but, well, back here actually, but, I mean, 
Gearbox wine. I certainly don't hear it. So let's head back to the office and talk about how much I am going to want to deduct from the refund of this car for all the things that we've found. I'll see you back there. Right, okay, so we're back in the office and as we're talking about a Porsche Carrera RS, I thought I'd wear my Jack Butel racing hat because we are sponsoring him in the Porsche Carrera Cup of Great Britain this year. So we will manage to get to some races and, uh, well, at least one race, maybe two, check out a Porsche Carrera race car, like a new one. It's going to be pretty exciting. So if you haven't already followed Jack, make sure you do. He's on Instagram as Jack underscore Butel underscore racing, I believe. But Toby will put it at the bottom anyway, because I'm not very good at remembering things. That's going to be quite exciting. Go and show him some support. And uh, yeah, there'll be a video coming out on that in the near future. Anyway, back to our Carrera S. So I've put together my little email that I'm going to send. Sorry about the creaky chair. Need to get some, get some oil in here. Um, I've put together an email about the things that I want to deduct. I don't necessarily think I'm going to get these or they're going to agree to it. But considering they've rejected this car back to me at 11 and a half months, near enough 12 months after the chaps bought it, and some of these, the, the problems that they're bringing up weren't raised until month seven or eight, I should never have had this car back. They should never refund it back to me. We're not going to work with this finance company anymore. In fact, they've been our closest relationship. Um, we've got a stocking plan with them as well. Well, that's all gone. They just haven't looked after us as a customer. Um, yeah, we won't be using them again. It's a shame, but uh, what can you do? Let's talk about what I want to deduct for certain things. So the missing book pack and the service history, full service history for a Porsche. I'm sure you can understand on a car that we sold for £22,950, it's quite important, especially on a 100,000 mile car. It's 20 years old. People want to know, has the RMS bearing being done? Has it been well looked after or whatever? It makes a huge difference. So I said I want to knock off £2,295 if I can't have that original history back, which is 10% of the original sale value. Is that asking too much? I don't think it is really. Think about the difference of value it's going to make. A car with full service history, including par Porsche specialists versus no history whatsoever. It's going to make quite a difference to the value, all thanks to our customer just losing it. We've got the damaged auto dimming rear view mirror. Uh, which has got the weird thing where it's been damaged and whatever. All right, I mean, it's still usable. It's not great, but it's not the condition it went out in. I spoke to Porsche of Bristol and they said it's £604.39 for one of those. Plus, we're going to have to fit it. We'll get to that. Two replacement tyres. I've given him money for, um, but he hasn't done them. So for two tyres, like for like, that's on there, which is Michelin Pilot Sport 4s, is £557.04, including the VAT. I've quite generously, I think, put labour to replace the above parts at two hours, £70 an hour, with £140 plus £28 of VAT, so £168 for labour to change the electronic rear view mirror and to change the tyres uh, and fit weights, balance them, all that sort of stuff. Our £70 is our labour charge, although we've stopped doing that now, but that was our charge. Obviously, some of our genuine Porsche floor mats were missing. All right, they weren't brand new when he took it, but if I want to get replacement ones, I've got to go to Porsche. They are £146.96, including VAT for a set, which actually I don't think is too bad from Porsche. For an older car, you would have thought they'd be kind of more expensive. And only two days lead time to get those, which I thought was very good. I've sent pictures of all the different scratches and things to my paint man to say how much would it cost to do that. He's told me £576, including VAT, to do that. Then we are allowed to make a charge for fair usage of the mileage. It hasn't done a huge amount of miles, 947, uh, but I'm going to try at 45 pence per mile. That's what um, Citizens Advice Bureau always tell people to do, and that's what you're allowed to claim against your tax bill or whatever for your mileage. Um, so that would be 426 pounds and 15 pence. And I need to fit in a replacement rear number plate as well, which is 15 pounds. Now that was all I remembered at that point when I sent that email. So that comes to £4,788.54, including the VAT. But I also forgot that he hasn't given us our Porsche PCM, Porsche control module, the head unit, sat nav, and everything back, the original one that all went with the car. I've looked on eBay. I mean, I could phone up Porsche and find out how much one of those is. But I bet you it's going to be thousands if you can get one. They are around about £300 on eBay for the cheapest ones that I can find that look 
in an okay condition. So we're actually looking over the £5,000, £5,040 I think he paid for his deposit. Um, but I would like to deduct really. Now do you think I'm a crooked car dealer asking for that money off after all this time? Um, or can you see that someone's bought a 20 year old car, we fixed a couple of issues for it in one go, he's gone then away after I said I didn't want to sell it for him and has said it's got a gearbox problem, the gearbox whining, he's complained to the finance company. The finance company have sent out an ace inspector who plugged it in and said oh yeah there is a fault there probably would be if it had a flat battery and the PCM is missing. There's always going to be communication faults if the PCM is missing and you've put an aftermarket radio in, that's just standard. And told me that that's that or it's going to auction and they will sell it at a massive loss and bill me for the difference. I, I could go to court and fight them over it, but time, money, you know, it's just more stress than I could deal with. So what do you think? A year's use of a Porsche doing a thousand miles, sitting in your garage, not looking after it very well, losing a load of stuff to be deducted £5,000-ish. What do you think? Uh, I can't tell you what they say yet. I don't know what's going to happen, but make sure you follow me on Instagram, shifting underscore metal. I'll try and give you an update on there. In the meantime, we'll get this car in the workshop, sort out the tyres. They're already here, and we'll sort out the coolant light temperature thingy and whatever, get it tippity top and decide whether we are going to retail it again or whether we trade it on or whether I keep it. I do love that car. Um, but we'll see. I've already had people seeing it on my Instagram story and they're like, oh, how much is it going to be? So we will see. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video more than I have making it. Uh, if you have, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe. If you enjoy this sort of video, then you need to be subscribed and hit the bell notification. We've got loads of auction videos coming up. We're visiting other dealers. We're going to go and find out, see how they get it done and steal all their tricks of the trade. Don't forget, you can get some of my merchandise on shiftingmetal.co.uk. You can check out Jack's merchandise as well. I can't remember what his email address is, uh, website is even, but Toby will probably put that up there. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.